All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome uh, to my channel after long last back online, back on YouTube, trying to get back to doing some painting. Thirsty is here. Hello, Thirsty for a Blue, for a Brew, <laughs> Thirsty for a Brew. Glad to see you here. Tonight I'm going to be doing this. Whoa, where's he at? This little metal lark guy. Love painting uh, birds. I did a poll here on YouTube. And so many of you wanted to see some uh, birds, or birds was the, the number one choice of things. So I'm going to give those a try. Just let me get some things settled around here uh, with my computer. It's been such a long time. I'm kind of forgetting how to do this. And um, I'm just going to jump right in here. Actually, I'm going to start by cleaning my palette a little bit. It looks like I've gone out of focus just a bit. Uh, I'm going to be using a lot of colors on the bottom here, so I'm going to clean the bottom part of my palette just a little bit. Here we go. Thirsty, how are things going this evening? Hope they're going well. There we go. Quick little clean I don't even know <laughs> yeah I'm not even sure how I look at this point to see out oh, here where my broadcast is anything like that all right I've got some stats coming up over here now that looks good and I've got my reference photo here I, I think I'm ready to roll all right, uh, so what I'm going to do, I don't seem to always do this. I'm going to actually start with a background. I'm not going to do a full background, uh, but I'm just going to do some, some blue here and there uh, in the back, just to give the indication that something's there and I give a little interest to this guy. So I'm going to start by putting some water on here. I don't know, something like that. I'm just going to spread it way around when i put this blue paint on i want it to run all over the place i'm going to do the same thing on this side also just so i have this blue going on two sides of this guy and just spread that water out nice and wide and then i'm going to mix uh some of my blue here i'm going to use Oh, a little bit of cerulean blue. I love cerulean blue. I look up in the skies here. It seems like a nice uh, cerulean sky. Maybe I'll mix just a little bit of this cobalt blue in there. Or just set this out here and let this run really pretty much wherever it wants to. Might have had just a little bit too much water on there, but that's okay. We're going to get started with this painting just like this. Let this water go, this water, this paint go and spread out however it wants to. Just, just kind of like that. Uh, not bad for a Wednesday. Time to feed the dogs. Yeah, get out and feed the dogs. They need you. I got home from my normal job this evening and took care of all my pets. Hopefully, I'm going to cross my fingers and say I took care of all my pets. Um, I'll go, when I go in the house, I'm sure they'll start yelling at me and, and yapping at me like uh, they want me to do something else, but that's okay. I actually love my pets. They're fantastic. Two cats, four chickens. I'm sorry, did I say two cats? Three cats, four chickens, one fish, one rabbit, and a frog. I think that's what we got in my house. Something like that. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. If I missed somebody... Oh, a goldfish. Did I say a goldfish? I don't know if I said a goldfish. Uh, I see a couple of people are here. Um, if you want to, stop and say hello. I would love to hear from anybody that's here. Love to hear anything you have to say. I'm just going to mix a little bit of this uh, Payne's Gray with whatever's on my palette here. It's just a, a dull gray color because now my blue is wet up here around the bird i'm gonna, I'm gonna take just a moment to 
uh, paint the little post that this guy is sitting on. And the question I always ask when I see people paint uh, feet like this or, or around legs is, do you paint, are you painting the claws or talons or, or whatever you want to call them? And in, in my world, uh, I paint them. I paint right over top of them. I don't paint the, the legs per se or the feet or the, the knuckles or uh, whatever they have here. I guess they're feet. I don't paint the feet, but uh, I do paint the the talons the claws they're normally black or a dark colored anyway and so it's just it's just as easy to paint uh, over them with these early washes and then you can come back over them with a dark color later there you go i'm going to mix a little bit of blue in up here i'm not going to use the same blue i'm going to get a little bit of ultramarine up here and it's gonna run a little bit and I'm kind of okay with that let it run down I got plenty of paint down here this doesn't need to be I don't know something that's really gonna stand out down here this is this is you know what actually let me put a little bit of the burnt umber on here maybe make it look like it's got some rust on here a little bit too right maybe there's a little bit here and a little bit a little bit there on the edge and burnt umber does a really nice job of simulating a little bit of rust on there. There we go. That's just an old post. We're just gonna let it um, let it sit like that, and we're not gonna bother it after this. And it's gonna become a beautiful a post that this guy's sitting on. I thought, all the only thing I need to do is just make sure I don't get a bead of water down there right at the very bottom, and that's it. Uh, now I'm looking up at this guy and, oops, I've got to, uh, I've got to get a nice yellow color on him. So what I want to do is I want to get a couple of nice shades of yellow down here on his chest and on his stomach, right a little darker underneath here, and then a couple of really nice colors of brown and a little gray back here. So I can go ahead and start mixing those colors up right now. I'm going to start, uh, I'll put it over here, with a little bit of uh, this yellow ochre, and I'm going to mix in some of this burnt umber, and this is going to be the base of my brown color, a mix of these two. It's actually not a bad color right there, and I want this to be everything that, uh, one coat of this is everything that is not yellow. So I'm going to need a little bit more of this. Than I've got right now. Looks like I may need to refill my burnt umber in there. That's a nice color. It's a really nice color. Sometimes I don't like to use uh, what is it, yellow ochre on the first go around on some paintings, but uh, because it's opaque and anything you put over top of it, then not always, but sometimes. It's just a little, a little funky, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a shot this time, and we'll see how it goes. Let's see. Maybe I didn't draw this exactly right. I think this goes something like this. He's got a little bit of yellow up there on his head. Anybody who can see, I've pre-drawn this out. This is, I'm not doing this freehand. Do, I do tend to uh, turn my page a bit, a bit. Sometimes it just makes it a little bit easier. Um, if you if you can control where the the tip of that brush is going a little bit more, makes it just slightly easier to do so let's get some nice color on here we got plenty of paint on here especially for how how light this is going to be so we can bring this right on down right on down to here 
this dries up this will be a really nice light color on here and I'm just I'm just using the edge of my brush uh, to make a ragged edge I don't want uh, this to be a, a, a hard edge all the way down where the the yellow and the brown feathers are going to meet it can be really nice and light there so we'll leave that little bit of space in there and I'm going to tip this this way my desk is slanted so all my paint should now run right down towards me should make it just a little bit easier to get all of this on here and as I come down to his tail I'm looking at his tail and I think maybe maybe his tail down here has a little bit of gray in it on the underside so when I get there I'm just gonna just gonna touch in a little tiny bit of Payne's gray just to make it a little bit easier uh, to add some color at the next layer if I need to just a touch of Payne's gray here not much at all a little extra water in there There, something like that just follow that right on down at this point down here it's it's little more than color by numbers at this point in time we're so far down here we have almost no paint on here it's a lot of water and all we're trying to do is just kind of keep it between the lines I think I have a little too much on there I think that's gonna cause a back run but let's let's do that there we go all right, so you can see uh, kind of the back shape of this bird, and you can see already that this the blue on here is going to cause kind of a dramatic effect. Michelle is here. Hi from Vancouver, Canada. Um, what type of brush are you using? Okay, so since I've been gone for uh, quite a long time, that's a great question. If I had a whole pack, if I could see where the whole pack is, I would let you know. But um, I'm often frustrated that my brushes, if I have an old one here, right, I would use a brush like this, it, whoops, like this, and it would get worn and used. And I would try to use some um, normal uh, round brushes, and they all have a dull tip to them. So I found uh, a company online, actually an ad for it. Oops, come on, come back and focus. There we go. An ad for it came up in my uh, social media feed. Alan is here. Hello, Alan. Welcome, welcome. And uh, I checked them out, and this was a super, super cheap price on this. This is a brush from King Art, and I only bought it because I could get the whole set. Come on, come back and focus. That would come to these super sharp points. Right, so I've got, this is a 12, here's an 8, you can see super sharp point. I've got a slightly smaller one here. This is a 4, and you can see it comes to a super sharp point also. And I thought that I would really like to use a brush that had a sharp point, because I always felt like I wasn't able to get into the spots where I wanted to with the brushes I was using. And, and to boot, these are synthetic brushes. Uh, now, from time to time, I've had uh, plenty of issues with getting a hook end on some of these um, synthetic brushes, and that's really frustrating and whatnot. So I've been using these for about six months now, and I haven't gotten any hook end on them, which is fantastic. And you can see as I'm doing this, they do, they come to a wonderful sharp point. And so even with a little bit of a larger brush like I'm using now, uh, that in the fact that I don't always have the steadiest hands, I still feel like I can get into 
some of these really tight places with this brush. Um, and and I, I've really enjoyed them. So to answer your question, this is a pointed round brush from King Art. Uh, this is the 9020 series of brush. Um, I think if you go to their site and buy the pack that I bought, uh, it's about a hundred and thirty dollars, I think. I'm not. I'm not trying to push you to uh, buy anything from King Art, but since you ask, I'll uh, and I because I enjoy their brushes, I'll I'll throw them a bit of a bone here. King Art, if you're listening, <laughs> reach out. Um, no, uh, uh, I think. The, the the pack of these, and it comes in a pack of, I want to say, eight or ten different brushes of all different sizes. I think there's one or two bigger than the size 12. I, I'm pretty sure there's a 16 at least, and it goes all the way down to some pretty tiny ones. I've got a two here. I think I have a zero around here somewhere. Uh, maybe I don't have it on my table. They come packaged in a beautiful box, all in tubes, um, with, um, what's the stretchy stuff? Um, uh, elastic ties around each of them. Um, so wonderful, wonderful brushes. I'm, I'm, I'm totally happy that uh, it wound up in my feed. I wasn't expecting uh, to find a brush or anything, but uh, I'm totally happy with these. So... So I'm happy to give them a little bit of a plug. And that's a great question because I seem to... Michelle, I think you've been here with me before. I seem to change my brushes probably every time you watch a, a different video. I have a different brush in my hand. I, I, I will admit to having uh, been called kind of a brush snob because I continue to change my brushes and I'm looking for that, you know perfect brush that I really want to use. I really, I feel like it's going to make me a better painter. I think it will. I think practice and understanding will go just as far, but, uh, but I want the feeling, everybody wants the feeling, um, like what we're doing really, like what we're using really is going to help us out. Maybe to some st extent it does because, because we feel like it does. Okay, um, I'm going to move past my brushes at the moment, and I'm going to move on. These guys are pretty bright. You can see from the, where's he at? From the, <laughs> I'm trying to get there. You can see from the reference photo, that yellow is pretty bright, especially when it's right out in the sun. So uh, I'm going to use kind of the brightest yellow I have on my, on my palette here. Uh, this is Hansa Yellow um, that I have here. Actually, it's Hansa Yellow Deep. And uh, I'm betting that my, my, my first layer of brown here is probably, it's dry enough so that I can go ahead and put this yellow on right over top. And I'm going to stick with this larger brush. Uh, this first layer that I put on everything, I'm probably going to stick with this brush. And uh, as we move into layer two or three, whatever the case may be, then I'll probably go to a little smaller brush. I'm finally learning to check the dryness of what I've got before I stick my hand in it. I'm, I know I'm really good. Actually, I can go right over top of, I can go right over top of that, what's black there because it's going to be black or extremely dark anyways. So I can go right over top of that. And I'm just going to block in some of this color right now. I'm not, I'm not worried about uh, mixing or changing colors so much at the moment. I just want to get some of this yellow. I've got too much on this little spot up here. So I'm going to use that to supplement uh, my paint down here. can't see I'm not well I'm, I can't see because I'm not looking up at the moment but if anybody I don't know how many people are out there if anybody else has any questions please 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 feel free to ask questions I love answering questions um, 
told the story before that you know watching YouTube and and other other sites and um, asking questions of artists that I've run into really is the way I learned to paint watercolors. I, we can debate whether that's the best way or not, but that's the way I learned. And and so uh, part of why I I like these live videos so much uh, is because I, I get to talk to people, and the people who are probably going to watch me are those people who are learning watercolors and want to get a little better at watercolors. And so if I can help anybody uh, do that, I love, uh, I love answering questions for you, so please, if you have a question, throw it out there. Whatever your question is, I will do my best to answer it. And if you don't ask questions, then um, you're just going to be stuck uh, listening to me talk all night until this is done. Or until I get tired, whichever comes first. Probably I'll finish this first before I tire out. I will say, though, that, um, you know, it's been quite a while since I, I have done a live video. And, in, and it's been a while since I <laughs> did much with videos of any such sort. Well, I set this com computer up to... Uh, do these videos <sighs> sometime last year uh, probably right around Halloween would be my guess I don't know maybe even earlier than that <laughs> all the settings when I came back today were changed everything was different uh, <laughs> it took me quite a while to, to get everything straightened around but hopefully we're here I'm looking and uh, the video signal strength seems good um, the sound quality looks like it's going out good. Uh, the only thing that may be questionable is the, <laughs> the watercolor painting. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean off another spot or two up here. Uh, I just want a little bit more space than I have in those two. There we go. Not at all. Normally when I hold it, I put my finger right in the purple, right here. And uh, I'm kind of not doing that so much anymore, but um, I do that quite a lot. All right, I've dropped down a brush size. This is, uh, this is an 8, and I'm going to get uh, a little bit. This is maroon perylene, a little bit of um, alizarin crimson. I want a darker red towards the purple. That's why I'm mixing in that blue well. And I want to come into this guy's mouth. I'm going to do this, start this upside down, just because it's easier to have the point away from me when I do this. And I'm hoping to get, let's see, maybe I should take some of the water out of it. I can get a little darker. I want to get some, uh, a little bit darker, there we go, inside his mouth. Just like that. It's a little bit darker in there. It's going back inside, so I want to do that, and I want to make sure but we keep some of that nice really light pink on the outside there so it looks like it looks like you're looking back into his throat there i think you can see that a little bit and uh my my uh my brown has dried up now so i'm going to uh, i'm going to look at my painting or my reference photo and figure out how i want to do this and what I want to do as I'm looking at this is I want to take some more of this burnt umber and I'm going to mix into that a little bit of sepia just to darken it down a little bit. And I'm not going to worry too, too much 
about being super representative here. I'm trying to, I know all watercolors, all watercolorists kind of say this. I'm trying to be a less representative painter and maybe more impressionist, but it's hard to, uh, it's hard to wrap your mind around that sometimes, but I'm just going to paint this area dark and this is kind of the area where you can see where his flight feathers are at or his longest flight feathers are here I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stay completely true to the to the reference photo here draw that like that I didn't draw this exactly uh, true to the reference photo either so it is going to end up a little bit different and then I think uh, what I'm going to do is well I was going to paint here but I think I'm going to drop down here and paint a little bit here uh, because I want this to be a little grayer a little bluer back here on his tail and I'm going to take just a little bit of artistic license And it's going to be really gray on the underside here. Something like this. I just looked down at the little post he's standing on. Look at that. It looks fantastic. It looks all rusty and everything. It's a beautiful little um, a post that he's sitting on. And I'm going to get a little bit of gray on this side too. And just leave just the smallest bit of a line in between the two and maybe maybe those feathers break apart there a little tiny bit and then I'm gonna leave this little bit here it's gonna be on the outside that little bit that I haven't painted I'll paint some really long feathers the tail feathers all the way from up here uh, back to there so that's what I want to do there um, and while I'm letting this dry down here, I can jump up to his head. And this is a, these guys are a little bit easier because, uh, to paint than some birds because they're kind of limited in the color palette, right? Um, so we've got a couple of different weights of brown, right? The sepia that I'm using is, is a bit darker. The umber is a bit lighter. Um, that helps us out in not having to mix a great deal of paint. A great deal of different colors, I should say it that way, of paint. And uh, it's got this, this beautiful yellow. Of course, this that's what uh, makes him so stunning is that yellow. There we go. That kind of wraps around his head. I think I'm going to leave that like that. Maybe I'll put a... I might not come back here. I'll just put a little feather two sticking out that way there we go and then I'm gonna I'm gonna go right around his eye here I know he's got some some dark up under here and I'm just kind of doing this I have a couple of lines drawn on here but some of this I like to do just by feel how does this go? This goes kind of around here. And I think uh, oftentimes, um, if we don't do this a little bit by feel, sometimes it, um, it actually feels not quite right. But I'm just, I'm trying to do the, 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 the reference photo, you know, justice by uh, by staying somewhat true to it, but I don't want to be a slave to it. I just want to do my take on it. There we go. And he's got a couple of other little lines coming up here. Look, his face is almost done. Look at that pretty nice he's got a little bit of a line over here maybe and when I'm and when we're done if if we don't 
if we don't have that specific uh, uh, bird done, we'll have one done that looks really nice anyways. So uh, I'm not going to worry too much about it. Okay, and so this is dried up. That was just a small spot here. Now I want to step up and do uh, these wings here, these feathers over here. So I'm going to go back and make kind of what our original color was. And I'm going to put it on a little heavier up here. And I'm going to blend it back so it's almost nothing. If I can do this, I think I can do this. Uh, by the time it gets back to this other uh, bit of feather over there, I turn it this way. Sometimes it's a little easier as the paint, you know, uh, drains towards me. And I'm just, I'm just barely tapping that. I want that color to get all the way. I don't really want any of that undertone to be left behind. There we go. And quick as that. I want to actually. I want to do this. I want to make this a little thicker in here. I don't, but I don't want to add any extra water to it. I'm trying to get just a little bit of extra pigment up here without adding extra water. There we go. Now we can turn it around and let the water do what it wants. And with any luck, right? If we've done it right, what ends up happening now is it's going to look like this set of feathers is right on top of that set of feathers and then when we come back if we want to draw in any individual feathers we can go ahead and do that and, it, and it'll look fantastic and while we're here we might as well draw in some of these nice big tail feathers that are here i hope i'm doing this in the middle so you all can see it get this to a nice point I get a little quiet when I do stuff like this because it's sometimes a little hard for me to <laughs> do it. But there's a couple of tail feathers. Simple as that. Now it kind of looks like this, this tail feather on this side has got a little curve to it. Okay. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make his chest here and his stomach look rounded. And I'm going to do that with just a simple layer of color. So this one is going to be more of this gamboge color. So a little bit more orangey, a little darker. Make a nice puddle of this because I don't want to run out of it as I'm doing this. And I'm just looking to see what's darker. So it comes up to here roughly somewhere. So we can, we can pretty much, I'm going to start, well, let me start on this side. I'm going to start right over here. See what we can do. See how well we can do this. This comes almost all the way over here. Getting, for me anyways, getting shades of yellow is always a bit tricky for me. I never feel like yellows like to play nicely. I feel like yellows are are kind of a color that um, if you don't do it right, if you don't if you don't blend them right, if you don't darken them right, if you don't work with them properly, they don't work with you at all. Or if you want to darken a brown, there's usually always a darker brown. If you want to darken a red, there's always a darker red. Or you can always, you know, go to a, a purple. Maybe, you know, mix in a little bit of blue in there if you really want to. Uh, but what do you do if you have a red or a yellow? 
you go to a darker yellow, but sometimes darker yellows just turn orange on you, and orange is not yellow. So sometimes it's a little tough. Sometimes it's a little tough. But I think we've got it here. It's such a simple, simple thing. I think we've got it. Uh, and while, while I'm waiting for that part to dry there, I think I'm going to come down and mix up a little bit for his legs. I'm going to go with a little bit of quinacridone rose here. And I'll mix in a little bit of this burnt umber. And that looks to me, that's probably a nice leg color. And I'm just gonna might be a little a little too much there. Let's see. A beautiful color for this bird's legs. I got way too much, but that's okay. We just won't have to go back to our tray and get any more. There we go. So now I'm going to have to remember, uh, since I haven't done this for so long, I'm going to have to go back and try to remember how to even put on a thumbnail onto my, uh, onto this stream. It, um, got everything seems to have changed from the last time I did it. Might take me a <laughs> might take me a day or so to figure it out. I don't know. Somehow, some way, I'll get it figured out. I'll probably end up having to watch a YouTube video to figure out how to upload and change the picture on my YouTube video. How funny would that be? Actually, I have to say, YouTube actually has some pretty good tutorials on how to use their tools. They really, they really want you to, to know how to do it. All right, look at that. See, I got a little too much, a little too heavy in there, but that's okay. We can, we can pull out whatever we want. I just remember as I was learning, and I would show people what I'm doing, and, and uh, I used to paint on my lunch hour at my work, and people would come by and they would swear to me, watercolors are so hard, to, you can't make any mistakes in watercolor, it's so, that's the most difficult medium, and I kept looking at them going, you're watching me paint, you're seeing me make mistakes. Just like that. I just fix them as I go. It's not that hard. And then nobody would ever believe me. Nobody would ever believe me. Let's see, we got, uh, what do we have? Um, seven people watching right now. Who's ever watching out there? Excuse me, my eyes just got a little itchy. Reach out, say hello. I'd love to, love to, to hear from you. Let me know where you're watching from. I'll tell you where I'm watching from. I'm watching from the central, or where I'm painting from. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not really watching from anywhere. I'm painting from the central coast of California. About, um, I don't know, what am I? Half a mile, three quarters of a mile from the Pacific Ocean. Lovely part of California here on the central coast. And I say that uh, so that Mother Nature will uh, warm up our temperature maybe a little bit. <laughs> we had some really uh, wonderful days. And then uh, this week, this week Mother Nature has decided to plunge us back into winter and and we went from having some, oh, I don't know, high 70s, low 80 degree days, beautiful with no wind, just stunning 
picturesque days, you would say. And, uh, and now I get up in the morning and it's about 40 degrees and it gets up to, I don't know, maybe the mid fifties in the middle of the day. Uh, right now it's been doing that all week. I actually did it over the weekend too. Just a little chilly, just a bit. That's okay. Okay. Who do we got? Uh, Beatrice from Mexico city. Wow. I actually have a friend who lives in Mexico city. Welcome, and Anne uh, Molander, I hope that's right. Hello, Anne, welcome. Welcome, I'm glad you guys made it. I'm glad to have you here. If you have any questions about me, if you have any questions about my paintings, uh, my art style, my art, uh, my tools, please feel free to ask away about any of that. I love to, uh, I love to answer questions. I'm, I'm happy to do it. Um, the only caveat is if you ask the questions, you've got to, <laughs> you've got to accept what answer I give you. That's kind of the caveat. And, uh, sometimes I don't do a whole lot of swearing or anything, but I don't have a whole lot of filter sometimes. Um, I'm in Kuanas, Lithuania. Wow. That's a, that's a long way away. Um, is it, uh, I'm guessing, is it morning time in Lithuania? I don't know. Lithuania seems, uh, seems a whole world away. I hope you're well over there. It's a, it's a, troubled part of the world not far away from there right now uh, I don't want to not going to talk about it too much because YouTube will <laughs> will shut me down but I uh, hope you're well over there just mixing up some dark here uh, and 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 uh, and Beatrice do you guys have a uh, Beatrice uh, in Mexico City, you might. Do you have meadowlarks over here? And 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 I, I have no idea what kind of birds uh, you would have over there. Um, <laughs> Thirsty is Thirsty's just in his living room, <laughs> all the way from uh, the southwest. Of a southwest of America, I guess I should say. Thirsty, I'm not. I don't think I'm giving anything away by saying that. All right, I'm gonna paint. Uh, I'm gonna paint this guy's bib on right now. Like I said, I've just mixed up some paints here. Really, it's a mix of of. Uh, let's see. Now I need to think about this for a minute. Sepia up here, and a little bit of neutral tint. There's a little bit of black in here. I just want a a, a neutrally black uh, color. Or dark color, I guess, is a is a better way to say this. Doesn't have to be black necessarily. And I'm laying this on, and and I'm using the tip of my brush to um, leave a broken, kind of a jagged edge here. I'm I'm hoping that uh, by doing that, that's going to look like. Uh, the yellow feathers kind of reach into into the black. It's six forty three in the morning. Yes, it is. You are literally almost <laughs> halfway across the world over there. Wow. Uh, you're oh, you're Swedish, and you're there on your Easter break. Wow. Is that? Um, I'm, I'm just going to ask because uh, I don't normally travel anywhere on any break. I'm, I'm really kind of a homebody. I enjoy uh, being at home and uh, taking care of my little menagerie of pets and the rest of my family. Is that, is that something you do a lot? Uh, is, is travel throughout uh, uh, continent, uh, travel throughout Europe, uh, I'm always curious. I since I 
I think since I moved to uh, California, uh, since I moved to California, I think I, uh, I'm gonna, I was gonna say I left the state once, but I think I've left the state twice. Um, it's not very often. I don't. Uh, I'm not super adventurous when it comes to travel. I moved here from the Midwest. I grew up in Ohio. I grew up in Ohio. I was, had to take a job in Michigan uh, because I wanted a job. And uh, I think... I. I think when I lived in Michigan, I left the state of Michigan once, and that was to go to Ohio, and they were kind of right next door anyways. <laughs> and then, uh, I don't know, I'm just thinking, when I lived in Ohio, ah, phew, I don't know that I left the state much at all. I'm just not one that uh, travels a, a ton. So wide variety. Okay, Beatrice says. Okay, uh, and you haven't seen one of these. Okay, I'm not. That doesn't fully surprise me, because it's a kind of a North American bird. Um, wide variety of birds: woodpeckers, sparrows, blackbirds, kingfishers. Wow, at Chapultepec Lake uh, in in the city. Wow. Um, I love, I love, I, in fact, I have a drawing of a kingfisher, or a kingfisher, a blackbird over here. I'm going to paint a blackbird soon. I take uh, walks here down by, this is how silly I am. I live, I live by the ocean and I travel to a, a reservoir <laughs> to, to take walks from time to time. But they have, a, a, you know, just the different bird life that hangs out there. And I like hearing the songbirds uh, by the by the um, by the lake by the reservoir. So I, I travel over there quite a bit uh, to listen to those. And the the red winged blackbirds always sing nice songs to me. So uh, so I really like that. Actually, while I have this dark color and while I have this brush, I'm going to paint his eye in here. And then I love kingfish. We have kingfishers here. Uh, though I have never seen one in the wild. I've painted several of them, but, uh, but I've never seen one in the wild. Now, I'm painting, uh, I'm painting the eye on this guy, and I'm going to paint it solid. And I know that uh, I, I will need to... Man, there's a hair that got in there. I know that I'll need to go back and add a highlight. I'm going to do that with a pen. Right, a, a, a white gel pen. It just is a little easier than trying to uh, go back and and make sure that uh, you leave that that you leave that little spot in there. It's just that's just a that's just tough to do. Uh, but I've never seen a bird like the one you're. Okay, so you have never seen one of these. Okay. So this is the Western Meadowlark. I don't know a lot about this bird, other than the fact that we have them here. This is a Western Meadowlark. They live traditionally that I know of in anywhere from the Midwest. So let's say uh, Kansas, Oklahoma, Colorado, into the Dakotas up there in America. Um, they typically live there and west from there. So that would be out to Montana, Utah, into California. Uh, I believe... I believe they uh, range all the way down to Arizona, but I'm not 100% certain on that. Um, they probably are in Washington also. And they are, they are a songbird that lives here in... 
Uh, other than being a songbird and being lovely to listen to, I, I don't know. I, I don't have any idea what their diet is. <laughs> I don't have. Um, put this on. I got a little too strong with this, I think. I'm just going to. I've just barely a damp brush. I'm going to pull just a little bit of this paint off of there. I don't know um, if they are, I'll only eat, you know, berries and 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 fruits and stuff like that, or if they uh, eat um, insects. I have no no idea. I always tell myself I'm going to do some more research on everything I I, I paint, and then. And then when it comes down to it, life gets in the way of, of life, and uh, I never seem to have quite as much time to do this as I really want to. Uh, the research is what I'm talking about. I don't have quite as much time to do the research as I really want. So I never have quite as much information on them. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put this under here. Right, there's her tail or his tail. This is a this is a boy. I know this one happens to be a boy because the females have a less colorful, they're they're more all all of this brown color, less colorful plumage. S still sing wonderful songs, not maybe not quite as flowery, but uh, beautiful nonetheless how are we looking we're looking pretty good there right um i need to do a little work on his legs here so that's a little bit of this uh burnt umber burnt umber and quinacridone rose that gives us a beautiful color there we thin that out a little bit and I'm going to do this. This whole back leg that he's back got back here is all in deep shadow. So I'm going to put, oh, I'm going to paint the whole thing with one extra layer here. Yep, the whole thing, one extra layer. And then I'm going to come back in and, um, yeah, his feet here look a little, they look a little clumped up. So, let me put this layer on and then and then we'll come back and we'll give some detail to that and give him some claws. And then this one over here, we just do this. Boop. That much is in shadow right there. So actually, it's actually gonna help define his leg here. There we go. And Oh, I don't know. Let's see. This knuckle over here, some of this is in shadow, and maybe a little bit of this is in shadow. Something like that. And then we'll come back and do that, too. Oh, I'm just looking up at the screen. He's looking pretty good. I like the way he's looking. <clears throat> now, a lot of the rest of this is uh, some of these, well, you know what, I'm going to do this. Uh, he's got this beautiful brown all on his back, so I'm going to give him some of this brown. And this is mostly uh, the burnt umber here. Uh, oh, right up on his back up here, I'm just going to give him some color up here. Just like this. Before we go too far with anything else. And... I'll let it go about that far. And I don't want this to have a hard edge, so I'm just gonna grab it and spread this out. I'll pull it, I'll pull it down to these feathers down here. There we go. It's running a little bit, but we can take care of that. I'm 
we can just take care of that. And now he's got a little extra color on there. I think it, I think that helps him uh, look a little bit more well-rounded. There you can, there you can see if I get the little shadow or a, a reflection off of him. You can see that. And now we can start going in and adding some of these uh, bigger marks. And here's where I really wish I had a <laughs> a more blunted. Um, round brush and we start to add a few of these marks but that's okay I'm gonna start over here and they don't have to be perfect here's some mine are I guess mine aren't quite as big as they are on the real bird I think that's okay. I think what's more important is that we get all of these on uh, because they have they're kind of linear, right? They're they're in kind of a line. We just want to make sure that these are on in the direction that the feathers would be going. Right? And this is going to really help to add some shape to this bird if we can Add these on in this fashion. I'll give a couple up here too. Right? Um, I can't do the I can't do right on his back yet because that's still a little wet. But we can do we can just add some here and there on these other areas. I need to kind of wait uh, just a minute for this to dry up up here. While I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop down another brush size. Uh, what am I going to? This is a size two. It's a little tiny brush. I'm gonna go back into my my leg color here, and I'm just gonna draw some lines. Wherever, wherever he's got a knuckle at here, I'm going to draw a line or two, some around his leg. Let's add a little color here. And without doing too much, without doing too much, we're going to be able to uh, add a lot of detail on here this is a lot of this is going to come out from the viewer's eye All right what is this what is this this is what well, these are these are kind of the, the scales on his leg and they'll totally be able to see that without us doing a whole lot of work uh, to generate that and while Uh, what size is this bird? Oh, okay, Beatrice, what size is this bird? Uh, this is, uh, so you mentioned a dove. This is smaller than a dove, but bigger than a sparrow, right? If you have morning doves down there, this is, the largest this would get is, low oh, half to maybe three quarters the size of a morning dove. They're really not that big, as far as birds go. Um, they're fairly small. Let's see, he's got a talon right there. I got one here, I'll just draw it like that. It's kind of like um Yeah, kind of like double the size of a sparrow or a or a finch. Maybe a little bigger than that, not much bigger at all. They don't get they don't get that big. 
Let's see. I can get a little bit of extra red in there. Maybe we can maybe we can even darken this up in here a little bit more. Make that look like it goes back in there even deeper. But a beautiful bird, I think. Beautiful little bird. There we go. Now that goes way back in there. It's like it's way open. While I've got this black that's a little bit of wet, I'm going to give kind of a kind of a second go around to his eye. Like uh, I will leave a little bit of a light spot there. And how are we doing there? We're good there. We can come back and add some more spots there if I can find the right one of these. I think this is the one I was using. Need to get a little darker. Come on. Okay, come on. Give me some darker color. I'm trying to mix in some smaller spots and some larger spots. I don't want them all to be the same size. Not because they can't be in real life. I, I mean, if you look at the picture, if you can, if you can get into that picture, uh, you'll see that many of those uh, spots on him are the same size. I just, it's not, not how I want to do it. Uh, boy, I want to. I do want to do this though. I want to give a couple of lines here. I'll try it with this brush. This is the point where I normally ruin my painting. There we go. A couple of flight feathers. Just we needed some. Had all those spots on there. Uh, and I think we just needed a little something to, to take away from that on here. So a couple of these lines on these feathers. Uh, let me do one more at, right at the bottom here. Right here. That'll set that off. There we go. And... Uh, where's my brush? Here's my brush. What I'm going to do is a couple of a couple of lines in the yellow also here and there because I want I want you to see the shape of the body and there's just a couple of little lines placed here and there will really help with that. I don't need too many. They don't need to be very big. They just need to follow the, the contour of this guy's body. Let me give him one or two up here. Something up here. I'm going to give him a little highlight on his eye. There we go. And I think that is going to be about it. I was looking for a pen to sign it with. There's one. I'm going to sign this guy right over here. And that is going to be my uh, Western Meadowlark. There he is. I think he turned out kind of nice. Yeah, I think he turned out kind of nice. I like the way his feet come down and he's hanging on to uh, this metal post or whatever this is. I do like the way these feathers, these flight feathers come out, and I like the look on his face up here. So that's all I've got for everybody today. Um, he looks great. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate that. Um, I am going to try my hardest, you know, fingers crossed, uh, to be back every Wednesday. Thank you, Beatrice. I appreciate that. I can't promise that I'm going to make it every Wednesday, but I am going to try to make it every Wednesday. On the weekend, uh, I'm going to try to be on uh, Twitch, if possible. Maybe like Saturday morning uh, or something like that. 
before the rest of the family gets up, I'll, I'll probably come out and, and get onto Twitch. So if you do that, you can look for me there. Uh, if you follow the links in the doodly-doo down below here, um, is a link to my Discord channel, and you can get this picture. I'll drop this picture in my reference photos uh, over there, and you can you can go and grab that if you want to paint this, or you can search uh, online and find one of your own and uh, give it a try. If you do give it a try, uh, leave me a message. Let me know how it turned out. I'd love to hear. And uh, thank you, Michelle. It's nice to be back. It was it was uh, I will admit it was a bit stressful thinking about coming back, uh, but once I'm here, it's it's actually easier to do it once I start uh, than it is uh, dreading thinking about coming back to do it. So uh, I'm going to be back, and, um, um, and and we'll go from there. Anne says, beautiful, Dwayne. Uh, the crafty visage, great-looking bird. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Beatrice, it was great uh, uh, learning with you, too. I learn right along with you. Every time I paint, I feel like I learn some more. So... That's all I've got for you guys. Have a great night. Have a great morning, wherever you're at. We'll see you again next time. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.